Now, the Department of Agriculture is building up vaccine stocks and expanding inoculations to fight a worsening foot and mouth disease outbreak. Foot and mouth disease is a highly contagious viral infection of cloven-hoofed animals that may also affect other species. Flare-ups have been reported over the past months in five provinces. Joining me to understand what foot and mouth disease is and why the outbreak matters to humans is Professor Armando Bestos in the Department of Veterinary Tropical Diseases at the University of Pretoria. And she's also an expert in infectious diseases epidemiology. Prof, thank you so much for your time. And I think let's just start with basics about a clear definition of what foot and mouth is and where it comes from. Good evening, um, thank you. So foot and mouth is a highly infectious viral um, disease. And as you've mentioned, it does infect a very broad range of cloven hoofed animals. Um, the clinical signs usually we see in domesticated species, but we can also see it in wildlife species. And it is maintained um, within our buffalo populations. So usually um, foot and mouth disease outbreaks um, because of the control measures that we had and they were very effective, we would only really see it in cattle that came into close proximity to Buffalo um, and primarily Buffalo in the Kruger National Park in the north um, eastern part of the country. Of course, that's changed substantially over the last few years. Um, and when it does get into cattle, um, there will be um, some of the obvious signs would be salivating because of the lesions in the mouth. Sometimes the entire top surface of the tongue will in fact come off. The animals will not be able to eat, they lose condition. They also struggle to walk um, because of the lesions on hooves. And obviously in a high production system, that this has a vast impact um, on cattle and on the production system, including milk production. So is this mostly um, cattle and not necessarily domesticated animals that also can be affected? So your household pets, for instance? It doesn't affect household pets. Um, although it has a very broad species range that it can infect, it is only cloven hoofed animals. So it, it would include um, sheep, uh, goats, pigs, cattle, um, and all wildlife species that are also cloven hoofed, but buffalo and, and antelope. Does it in any way affect humans, and if so, how? So in terms of disease, no, it doesn't affect humans. Um, there is a similar disease called hand, foot and mouth disease, but that is called by, caused by an entirely different virus. Uh, it's a Coxsackie virus. Um, and although they're in the same family, very different um, host ranges. Foot and mouth disease, the athovirus, um, which affects cattle, does not infect humans or any other species other than cloven hooved species. Obviously, it does when we have outbreaks. Um, it has an impact on economy. It will have an impact mm. on uh, beef production supplies. Um, so there will be, and also on trade, international trade. So it impacts the country um, economically. And speaking of that economic impact, if you could just elaborate a little bit about how it does impact the economy, the price of beef as well, uh, as well as the production. So the problem with foot and mouth disease is it's highly, highly infectious. Um, and although it doesn't kill cattle, um, in fact, the foot and mouth disease strains uh, it has very high morbidity, meaning that um, it's 100 percent morbidity. It will cause clinical disease, but that usually clears up within two to three weeks. Mortality rates are generally quite low, 5 percent. Um, but because it is so infectious, um, there are immediate trade bans that um, are applied when we have outbreaks. So you'll already have seen um, that China has already instituted a ban. Neighboring countries have done the same. Um, and when you have an outbreak, we also quarantine um, the areas and we designate management areas, disease management areas. That then means that, um, for example, a supplier like Heron Beef, which has a huge feedlot of 145,000 cattle and would slaughter 2,000 cattle a day, if they are under quarantine, that supply chain comes to a grinding halt. And as in a short term, there will not be as much beef locally, 
However, um, we do have measures in place for dealing with um, FMD affected um, farms. And the moment there is mass vaccination, 14 days later after the last animal is vaccinated, that supply chain um, can again kick in and animals can be slaughtered at FMD designated abattoirs, which then means in the short term, um, local supply will be affected um, and there may be a bit of a shortage, but longer term, um, because beef can only really supply the local markets, they may in fact become a surplus and beef prices could go down. Oh, so it wouldn't actually increase the, the price, but that's more in the medium, is that correct, Prof? For the short term, so the would that increase the cost? In the short term, we may see a slight increase, um, but I think longer term, there will probably be an oversupply in the local market because we can no longer trade with um, within the SADC region or externally. And that's probably then what will save us um, in terms of having enough supply. Yeah. We're, food security in terms of beef for those beef lovers, um, you, you might have to pay a little bit more, but um, longer term, you should be paying less. You mentioned that uh, countries like China have already instituted a ban when it comes to this uh, particular fit and mouth. Um, where do we stand as South Africa when it comes to that right now? Um, in terms of? Instituting a ban at this point. So it, it's external countries that will institute a ban. Um, we control the disease through quarantine, um, and there will also be mass vaccination. And we know from prior outbreaks that um, mass vaccination can work quite well. The problem, though, that South Africa faces is that we are reliant on external countries for those vaccines. Um, Historically, we produced our own vaccines. They were incredibly effective. Our control measures were also effective. And essentially, we were able to restrict outbreaks to a portion of the country, which enabled us to declare the remainder of the country free of the disease, which mm. meant we didn't have to vaccinate. So in terms also of, of the economic implications for the country, is purchasing those vaccines from outside, maintaining cold chains, um, doing mass vaccination campaigns is going to be incredibly expensive for the country. And ideally, we need to get to a point where we can produce our own vaccines again. We can restrict the outbreaks to the northeastern part of the country, surrounding the buffalo populations that are persistently infected. Um, because if we don't get back to that point, it will become a very expensive exercise for the country. And agriculture is one of the sectors that is actually showing economic growth. Um, so it will impact, it will have broad impacts. Mm. And from prior experience, how long um, would a breakout like this last for? Well, it depends on how quickly we can contain it. Um, there is obviously buy-in from um, the affected farms. They, they did actually do a preemptive quarantine the moment they realized that it could be foot and mouth disease. So, and with the mass vaccination and the vaccines arriving next week in the country, um, if everybody pulls together and maintains the biosecurity, the quarantines and sticks to the very strict protocols that are in place, um, we should be able to bring it under control quite quickly. I think that's a good note to end it on. Prof, thank you so much for uh, your insights and sharing your time with us this evening. That is uh, Professor Armando Bustos, who is uh, from uh, the Department of Veterinary and Tropical Diseases at the University of Pretoria.